Hey everybody, welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz. Jeff Antoniak here. You're gonna be so happy you tuned into this one. We're gonna talk about accented dissonances. Accented dissonances. And now this is gonna to apply to all instruments as these videos always do. So we're gonna you know, talk melodically, but man, this applies to comping and your voicing. This applies to how a drummer plays and accompanies. It's gonna be very cool. So what is this idea of an accented dissonance? Well, accented means you know, making a point out of something. A dissonance is some tension, right? Now think about every great book you've ever read, every interesting conversation you have ever had, any good movie you've ever seen. There's those moments when you are shocked, like, whoa, what just happened there? I didn't expect that car wreck. I didn't expect that thing to blow up. I didn't expect her to break up with him. Those moments, they're accented. They sort of come out of nowhere. They're, they're not smoothed into. It happens suddenly, wow. That's cool, right? And it's dissonant, there's a tension, and it's not immediately released. That's the important part, so an accented dissonance. And so this is what all great artists work with. Like this is one of the main tools we have, is dissonance, tension and release, and then accented dissonance. Now here's the thing, in 150 videos, most of these videos have not had accented dissonances. This is a big change here that we're flipping. Now, I'm always talking to the adult amateur musicians and the semi-pros out there. You're the folks I love to work with, whether it's for free here on YouTube or Facebook, or all you folks coming in to work with me and the community at Jazzwire. Love having you there. Now, um, Here's, here's sort of the progression. Like to begin with, when we're playing jazz, we were just thrilled to play a right note. Oh my God, I finally landed on a right note. Thank goodness, right? Fantastic, we got some right notes. Then what most of my videos have been about is tension and release. Let's create a tension and let's release it. So one of the ways we can create a tension and release it is with enclosures, right? You've seen some of the enclosure videos. <laughs> Tension, tension, release, tension, tension, release. So I love teaching people tensions that have a built-in release or a required release, or we don't have to think too hard about what to do for the release. So it could be triad pairs. We were at home, I created some tension, and then I released it. Right? So most of the licks, the ideas, the harmonic progressions that we deal with, that I talk about, are that, that second bit of developmental thing, which is I wanna create some, te some tension, but I wanna release it pretty soon. Don't wanna freak anybody out, right? So now what I'm suggesting is this whole other developmental level of can we use a tension and let it sit there? Okay, that's a little tricky because by definition, that is playing a wrong note and then stopping and letting people sit with a wrong note, letting people sit with something in your book or movie that is totally weird and unexpected. That can be bad, <laughs> right? <laughs> We've all done that not on purpose and it can be pretty nasty sounding. So I tell you what, let me uh, give you some examples and play some examples for you. So on this sheet, what I did is wrote out some accented dissonances on three different chord types. I have a two, five, one progression here. And so the first example is an accented dissonance on a major chord. The second example is on a dominant chord. The last example is on the minor chord. So we can do accented dissonances on really any chord. Now, what should the dissonance be? Great question. The answer is, any weird or wrong sounding note would be a way to put it, right? So in this example, I used a sharp 11. A sharp 11 is a really good crunchy sounding note on a major chord, on a dominant chord, even on a minor chord. We don't see minor sharp 11, but it's a nice tense note. So the, th what is the dissonance you get to decide? It could be a sharp nine. It could be a flat 13. It could be a major seven on a dominant chord. It could be whatever, right? So I'm just giving you sort of the overall framework. Today I'm saying sharp 11. So I am suggesting for the next month, sharp 11 is your middle name. You're gonna use sharp 11s everywhere in an accented kind of way. So if you look at example number one, I'm gonna improvise for a measure. I'm gonna improvise for a second measure. In the third measure, I'm gonna play that little lick. 
And the important thing is that I'm ending on that tense note. I'm ending on that F sharp. Now I know as a good improviser, that F sharp might be a nice leading tone to a G. I may want to resolve that up to a G. I'm saying no. So let me do this. I'm going to play it for you and uh, give you an example of what this thing sounds like. All right, so I think I played it four times there. One time played it as written. The second time, I think instead of going up to the F sharp, I went down to the F sharp. So I could leap up by a weird interval, a tritone, or I leapt down, right? And then the third time, I leapt up as written but held the note long. The second time, I leapt down and held the note long. So I did sort of four different variations of it, going up, going down, holding it long, holding it short. They all work, right? So the idea is I'm unabashedly landing on that note and letting you sit with it. And sometimes hitting it short, bang, I really like the sound of that. To me, it's almost more dramatic than when I hold it out and let it rub. Up to you. Accented dissonance. Think about it. How often do you end a line like that on purpose? Now, you can end a line on a wrong note. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about I'm, I choose this. I choose, as the director of this movie, to go bang in this moment. I'm going to guess possibly never, right? Um, now, when I think about this sound, one guy comes to my mind, and there's hundreds there maybe. This sounds like Dizzy Gillespie to me. He loved doing sort of a wide leap, often a tritone, often to a flat five or a sharp 11. So this is very Dizzy Gillespie-like. Let me go on to uh, the second version. I'm going to use the same note, but this time on the dominant chord. So all of a sudden, a boring old 2-5-1 in C major, so diatonic, so diatonic, so diatonic, all of a sudden, we can make a really dramatic statement, right? So we've done it on the one chord, we've done it on the five chord. So let me do example number three on the two chord. Here we go. So again, I did some mix and matching of uh, jumping down to the note as written or jumping up to the note. Sometimes I held it long, sometimes I held it short. So there's so many options of what to do. So the biggest thing is I really am, I'm calling it accented dissonance, right? So clearly it's a dissonance and I'm choosing the sharp 11. It could be almost any dissonance. Um, the accented part is how I'm hitting it. So each time I was jumping from the root to the sharp 11. So every time I have the benefit of the interval of a tritone, it's a dramatic interval. I'm jumping to it. So that's one of the ways I accented it. I bet if I listen back, I probably did literally accent it with air or with articulation. So there's numerous ways the word accented is, you know, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it with interval, with the note, I'm doing it with volume and timbre and everything else. So now those are, you know, okay licks. They're fine. The purpose today isn't to give you the world's hippest lick. The purpose today is to give you this entirely other way to think about tension and release. And that sort of framework of you used to just try to find correct notes. So by the way, if that's you, 
starting out in the green community at Jazzwire is a great place to be. There's people there, they're playing good notes, but they're still sort of sorting things out a little bit, right? So for those of us that want to get that great tension and release, that bebop sound, that's what's going on in the red community at Jazzwire. That's what we have like 100 folks there working on from all around the world. And now, this is something I want to challenge the people in the blue community at Jazzwire on, is this idea about choo these artistic choices. Like, yeah, I want to add a little spice to this. How do I do it? This idea of an accented dissonance is huge. So next time you turn on a recording, next time you go to hear a concert, I want you to just think about the phrase endings that somebody plays. They play a phrase, they play a line, and then they end it. Did they end it in a sort of consonant way or accented dissonance? Did the end of their line sound like a question or did it sound like a statement? So this is how we get to start thinking like artists. And here's the thing, you don't have to have played jazz for 35 years to call yourself an artist. An artist makes artistic decisions. That's what the video today is about, making artistic decisions. And this one about accented dissonances is sort of an easy one to pull off. When we know what's behind it, I chose a pretty simple template, and now it's just a matter of remembering to do it and choosing moments. How do you choose moments? That's the artist in you choosing those moments. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. It really could be a game changer for a lot of you out there. And to really start doing this right, I wanna work with you. I want you to come into Jazzwire. And by the way, use the code DIGGINGSPRING. That gets you 50% off the registration to come into Jazzwire. I hope I'll see you there. Have a great time.